president. You miserable two-timing thief. You stole one hundred thousand dollars from me. Palmer, what on earth? You set me up, knowing full well that Phoebe had already sold that land to Lars Bogard. That is not true. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you calling your wife a liar? My wife? That's where I got the information. Oh, good heavens, she didn't know that I was involved in that, did, that, did she? That's fine, Mark, but uh, it's in the wrong key. <laughs> That's no problem. I'll have it for you. Mm. I need it tomorrow. Terrific. No problem. Listen, I'm glad you stopped by because I wanted to invite you to a cocktail party Erica's throwing this afternoon. Really? What's the occasion? Uh, no occasion. She just wanted to be friendly. Bring Serena, if you like. Oh, well, you see, that's the problem. Serena and I have already made plans for this evening. Well, uh, couldn't you just stop by for a minute? Well, I, I, I don't know how. I, I promised her an early dinner, and then we were going to take in a show. As a favor to me, Jack, I, uh, I sort of need you there. Well, please, won't you sit down? Thank you. So, you finished your book. Yeah, just dropped the last chapter off at the publisher's. Congratulations. So, now, at least I'm free to start ghosting your book. Well, that's wonderful. That's just wonderful. And listen, I have gathered together lots and lots of material for you. I mean, photographs and publicity shots and even family scrapbooks. Well, that's great. We can get started on it right now. Oh, well, no, I can't do it right now. I mean, people are coming over here very shortly for cocktails. But uh, I thought you were so anxious to get started. Well, I am. But I can't cancel my party. Miss Kane, the only reason I wound up my book so fast because you were putting so much pressure on me to start your book. Well, I didn't know that you were coming over here this afternoon. I mean, you know, you really could have let me know. Well, of course, if you want to have a cocktail party, it's okay with me. Listen, you're welcome to stay if, if you no, like. No, 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 I can't waste my time with that. You know something, I think that you're very rude. Well, I think you ought to get your priorities straight. You want me to help you with this book or not? show how to handle this matter. What is it, Sal? It's about Miss English. <sighs> Des, I know you direct a segment of her show, and I just thought I ought to tell you that there is some kook after her. Kook? Yes. Some guy has been calling her, sending her and sending her flowers, and re recently he left a pair of gold earrings on her desk. What, here at the station? That's right. And how this creep got into her office, I don't know. Yes? I'm Harold. Remember? From the goalpost? Oh! The new bus boy. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, can I come in a minute? not tell Phoebe about your part in it. Oh, thank heaven. Not yet, that is, but I certainly will tell her if that check for $100,000 isn't returned to me within the hour. Toad. Why? Why didn't she keep her big mouth shut? Oh, I am really sorry you won't check the but you this must wait check. five business days for your deposit to clear yeah, before you can draw on it. Office. I'm sorry, it's bank policy. Excuse me. Right. Pine Valley Bank, Mrs. Edward speaking. Finally. This is Professor Wallingford speaking. Yes, Professor, what may I do for you? Uh, do you remember that $100,000 check for Mr. Cortland? Yes. I, I need it back immediately. I'm sorry, Professor, that's impossible. That check is already being processed. You mean it's gone? 
Oh, I'm afraid so, yes. But you've got to stop it. Can't you call and have them send it back? No, that's impossible. There's absolutely no way. Once it leaves here, it's out of our hands. But this is a practically a matter of life and death. I'm really very sorry, but there's nothing I can do. But what good are you banks? You hold, you hold our money, you do nothing, and then when we need it, you don't give it back to us. You're thieves, that's what you are. You're thieves. Daphne! What are you shouting about? And this is my Sweet Sixteen album. Now, I've arranged everything for you in chronological order, beginning with when I got my first break as a model when I was a teenager. Yeah, uh, well, uh, there's no point in me wading through all this now. But I spent a lot of time getting this all together for uh, you. I can take care of it in my own time. I'd like to get some information from you firsthand. We'll record as I take notes, all right? But I can't do that now. I told you that I have guests coming over here for cocktails. I'm not even dressed. You can at least get a start. Sit down, please. All right, let's begin with your background. You t tell me about your parents, their names, their marriage, how they met. Well, I guess you already know about my father, the famous filmmaker, the famous producer-director, Eric Kane. No, no, I can't say that I have. I don't believe that. I mean, he was a giant in Hollywood. His films are still shown on television. Uh, you were born in Hollywood? No, I was born in Pine Valley. And, uh... Well, my parents were, were divorced when I was a very little girl. My mother drove him away, actually. She was so provincial and, and so stuffy. And then after they, they were divorced, I mean, I really wanted to stay with my father. But I wasn't allowed to. That's when he went to, to Hollywood? Yes. Because my mother was just stifling him, you know? All his creativity was being stifled. But when he went to Hollywood, you see, all his creativity was allowed to flower and bloom until he was this creative genius. And he rose to the top immediately. Did you see him after the divorce? Yes, of course. I, I saw him all the time. I mean, he was always having me spend time with him on my summer vacations and, and, and every school holiday. And he called me all the time on the phone. I mean, he really adored me. And obviously you adored him. Oh, yes. I mean, he was the inspiration for my entire life. My only regret is that he's not here now to, to share in my success. He died. Yes, he died a few years ago. I really never got over that. I have to tell you that. I mean, he was the only person in the whole world who really understood me. You were an only child. Well, I was the only child my father ever really loved. I mean, I do have an older brother from his first marriage, Mark. And I have a younger sister, Silver, from his third marriage. But I haven't seen her since we were very little girls. Yes, I remember reading about the, uh, your sister's impersonator during the trial. Yes. Yes, I wanted to devote a whole chapter in my book to that imposter. How she used me and how she nearly sent me to my death in the electric chair. You ever see Mark? You ever see him? Yes, I see him all the time. We're very close. He's a brilliant composer. As a matter of fact, he's on his way over here now. So you see, if you stick around, you, you could get to meet him. Well, what do you mean you need me? Well, you're one of Erica's favorite people. I know she'd like to see you. Oh, come on, Mark. Now, there's got to be more to it than that. Yeah. Uh, Erica thinks I'm running with a pretty fast crowd. This party is to check uh -huh. them out. And she heard about the cocaine at the last party. No, no, she didn't, and I don't want her to find out. Oh, I see. You want me there because I'm the only one in the crowd that doesn't do that stuff. Yeah. Look, if it, uh, if it looks as though I'm trying to use you, uh, I am. And I'm sorry. It's just that Eric already knows about Brit, so... Well, everyone in the business knows about Brit and her coke problem. Yeah, so I don't want Erica getting all uptight and spilling it to Ellen, because she'll put two and two together real fast, and then I'll... Uh-huh. And you think that if I'm there, then that'll throw both of them off the track? Well, it'll help me out. I mean, Erica knows that you don't do drugs, and... Well, it'll, it'll just help me out.